Hello, my friends. Welcome to another evening of setting up my library, uh, unpacking it, rather. Right now, it is a cold autumn evening outside, and it's raining. But inside, I have a fire going in the wood stove, and it's quiet for now. So, as long as that lasts, please join me as I look through some of my books. The weather might get a little rambunctious again. A few minutes ago we had a massive, massive sweep of hail that was just pounding on the roof. It was uh, really nice to be in here feeling cozy and warm. some books in here and also take a bag of some kind. Ah, this is just miscellaneous um, tissue paper and wrapping paper, things that I'm going to use for gifts uh, somewhere, somewhere down the road. I was wondering where I put this bag. So this book, this box contained lots of big books and some of these I'm very fond of. Um, so I guess we'll start with, let's see, is this my oldest book that I have? It's not that impressive, but it is my dictionary that I won in uh, 1998. Uh, for getting first place in a spelling bee. And I think I've used this book, this dictionary, before. In, an, in another video a long time ago. Just reading definitions of words. Which maybe it would be nice to do again sometime. It's always nice to have a good dictionary on hand, although usually my dictionary these days is Google, but uh, this is a nice reference as well. Another reference book here is Data Structures and Problem Solving Using Java. Uh, programming Language. I purchased this book online when I was first studying, first teaching myself how to program and trying to write um, an Android application. I never did get into Android development or mobile development very well, but this was a great reference uh, reference book. Um, it's, it uses Java, but it's teaching uh, things like data structures and algorithms, so 
this chapter that this bookmark was in was about binary search, which is a classic, uh, classic algorithm you learn when you're learning the very basics of coding. Some of these I don't know. Huffman's algorithm, not sure about that one. That's in the file compression section, which I admit I know very little about. Shortest path problems, which have given me headaches in the past. Those are not my favorite. Java, solid language, used a lot. Uh, this bookmark was in there. It seems to be... Hmm. It says projectpostburn.com And then there are characters here well, let's see. I'll just bring it up to the camera. Let's see. Can I do that? It's gonna... Anthropomorphic characters here. Hyenas. But I don't have any memory of what Project Postburn is. Cool art, though. I used to keep a collection of bookmarks. Most of them have scattered to the winds, but I should start that up again. Oh, they're prints. So this is a art book uh, that was gifted to me. Um, it happened to be gifted to me from someone who I don't think knew that I knew who this artist was. I think it was just a, a Kickstarter that they funded or something like that. But the artist is Simon Stalinhog. Uh, apologies if I said that wrong. I believe it's, what is that, Swedish? Something like that. And this artist does a lot of post-apocalyptic, gigantic, monsters, dystopian art. And this art book, I believe, is it's a it's telling a story. But I admit I haven't read through the story. It's something I would really like to do. Art is very solemn and grim and atmospheric. Like a like an illustrated picture book, I think. Um, for but for adults, which I there should definitely be more of in the world. We'll need to read through that at some point. This is the first. Uh, complete Printing of Digger by Ursula Vernon. I talked a little bit about Ursula Vernon in my last video. Uh, T. Kingfisher is the name that she publishes a lot of her work under now. And this was a webcomic that she published online 
many years ago, and then it was eventually, I believe, kickstarted um, to print a uh, this huge edition, and I believe it was recently reprinted again, uh, which I I didn't purchase because I already had a copy. But uh, so I don't know how that version compares. But um, this comic won a Hugo Award, which was pretty cool. And I believe she said that she's proud of it, but doesn't have any real desire to do a long, long, long comic again. In fact, she doesn't do as much art as she used to do. I'm not sure. I'm not sure why those things change over time. Different reasons for different people, I'm sure. Okay. Another bookmark. This one is specific to the comic. Uh, I, I drew that one. Digger featuring the main character, the wombat. Digger is the name of the wombat. And this really doesn't look too much like her. Really looks more like a rodent than a wombat, but still kind of cute. I, I, I drew this to, to clarify. This is another art-focused book, uh, another gift from someone, and I believe this was also a Kickstarter project, um, and I'm so glad that it was given to me as a gift because it is super cool. Uh, the art style, the story, um, I'll read some of the premise. The year is 2107 AD. Things are looking grim in Robo City 16, the biggest megacity in the known world, and the jewel of the robotic union. With the help of the ministers and Robo President Keen Dai 4, robots have become the ruling class while humans are pushed to the ghettos, condemned to slave labor and misery. Those humans in position of power, positions of power tolerate the situation in order to keep their privileges. The Ministry of Information and the police force act with brutal efficiency to identify and remove any dissenting voice amongst the population. Uh, and then the story is largely about the rebellion, uh, humans rising up, um, and it's been a little while since I've read it. Um, cyborgs, maybe there's some ally robots as well, if I remember correctly. It came with stickers, some of which I've used. I think I put these on my laptop. And uh, this book also takes the form of a story, a narrative, but I believe it doesn't have any, any writing or much writing at all. It's mostly just told through illustration. And the art style, uh, I, I adore this art style. I, the type of detail and the environmental aspect and the, oh, it's just, it's so good. It's so dynamic and evocative. And 
You'll hear my cat making noises over there. Anyway, good stuff. Uh, the artist is... I should know their name. I don't. Well, I don't, I don't know who the artist is, but it says you can find, it says citadel9.com is their website. I'm not sure if Citadel9 is the name of the artist or is that the... It might be the name of the artist. Cool name, if so. Anyway. Oh, maybe this says it. Um, hmm. No, but this is stylized like a VHS uh, sleeve, and it says VHS right there, uh, which is fun. Sort of throwback to. Probably the, I guess the 80s, 90s, cyberpunk origins, I would guess. Right. Wow. Uh, another gift. This is a graphic novel by Mirka Andolfo called Unnatural. It is a anthro anthropomorphic characters and it's a uh, I definitely enjoy this the the premise um it's another sort of dystopian society where uh, different species of anthropomorphic animals, they're, they're supposed to mate with their own species only. Uh, and they're not supposed to cross breed across different species lines. And uh, that's the initial premise. Then there's to get into more of the politics and relationships and so on. fun stuff. Another reference book. This one is Anatomy for the Artist, which I think, I don't know if I got this in college. If I did, it was fairly early on. I've had this for quite a while. And it is a reference of all the different, all the different pieces of the body, um, primarily in isolation, which is sometimes useful, sometimes not. But it, uh, you can look up any piece of the body and find its structure here. Again, somewhat replaced by the digital, the digital age, because there's so many 3D model viewers that are focused on anatomy as well, that I generally use these days. You can rotate the model around, and so this, this, uh, this sort of book is slightly antiquated, although you can still see the function here, like it's got the back of the leg here, it's got the side of the leg here, so it's 
It's all the same information. Highly detailed, very thoughtfully put together, meticulously rendered. And I've got little bookmarks here. Let's see. Here's one for the foot. That makes sense. Feet are extremely difficult. Um, here's the arm, so the deltoid, bicep, um, those are all the other ones I don't know the name for, those are all good to me. Uh, this one is about proportions, I think. You might have, um, if you've studied art, you know that humans are seven to eight heads tall. If you use the head as a unit of measurement, you'll find that general ratio. Movement, walking, gait. So, very useful back in its day. And then I keep it around because, well, I don't know. It's good to have reference books. The last one in this book last one in this box is one of my favorites, The Computational Beauty of Nature. This was also given to me as a gift by a mentor in my first, uh, my first job as a software developer. Mm. And it goes into the um, computation involved in the processes of nature. Like here, for example, is a chapter on fractals, and the way fractals are computed is it's a <clears throat> it's been long enough since I've looked at this that I'm not going to be able to articulate it well, but generally um, fractals are or how the natural world can be described and often how it's generated uh, through biological or even um, like geological processes. There's a lot to this book that I haven't read yet. It's very dense and very uh, highly technical in a lot of ways, like it goes into some of the algorithms and I've used some of these as studies for uh, different different coding coding problems and experiments. Uh, but it's it's also pretty math heavy and Math is sort of a weakness of mine, but this book is something I need to read more into. I think this is as far as I got just reading it from the beginning. I'll read the insect summary. Oh, the, the subtitle is Computer Explorations of Fractals, Chaos, Complex Systems, and Adaptation by Gary William Flake. In this book, Gary William Flake develops in depth the simple idea that recurrent rules can produce rich and complicated behaviors. Distinguishing agents from their interactions, Flake argues that it is the computational properties of interactions that account for much of what we think of as beautiful and interesting. From this basic thesis, Flake explores what he considers to be today's most foremost interesting computational topics, 
fractals, chaos, complex systems, and adaptations. Each of the book's parts can be read independently, enabling even the casual reader to understand and work with the basic equations and programs. Yet the parts are bound together by the theme of the computer as a laboratory and a metaphor for understanding the universe. The inspired reader will experiment further with the ideas presented to create fractal landscapes, chaotic systems, artificial life forms, genetic algorithms, and artificial neural networks. So, relevant to my interests, for sure. This was a good box. Not very many books uh, because they're all so heavy, but in order to make the box move, I, in order to move it around, I couldn't put too many in there. Uh, since there weren't that many books in there, I think. I'll open another box. This has quite a number of things in it. <clears throat> so the first one here is not a book per se, but it is my ancient Kindle. Uh, this was the best Kindle model that they ever released. The only thing it's missing is a backlight. And uh, I think now it's also slightly out of date in that you can't access the store from it anymore. Of course, that was a, that's a software thing, not a hardware thing. Anyway, this is the best one, and it has analog buttons for changing the pages, which is leagues better than having to swipe on the screen. It drives me crazy, but until I find an e-reader, I, I, I traded it in for one that had a backlight, but I miss this one every day. And I still have it in case I need it. This is a relic from my childhood. A damaged relic, unfortunately. These, this book set got wet at one point, and so you can see a bunch of discoloration. But this is the His Dark Materials series by Philip Pullman. I know they made a movie of the Golden Compass, which is this one. I didn't see the movie. I reread this book several times as a kid, and then I, re I read the series maybe twice. Excellent series, very... one of the distinctive, intelligently written uh, young adult series. And it has a lot of serious themes including religion and relationships and yeah it's a good fantasy series what's this <clears throat> we have characters from Tolkien I admit I don't 
recognize this book. Uh, it's not one that I purchased, and I don't, I mean, I don't remember purchasing it, and I don't think it was given to me. Yeah, oh, it's beautiful. Wow. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, so this is gorgeous, but I, I don't know where it came from. Perhaps I picked it up at a thrift store once and then buried it somewhere and forgot about it. I'm not at all sure. But the art in here is gorgeous. Oh my word. Wow. This book, let's see, it's a best a bestiary by David Day. And it was printed in 1979 first. This printing happened in 2001, but this was published in 1979. Uh, which is definitely, you know, before the modern movies. Uh, was it before the animated version? Perhaps just around the time of the animated version. I think that happened in the 70s. I could be wrong. Oh, this is beautiful. I'm not a Lord of the Rings like super fan, but I, you know, I read, I read the books and definitely watched the movies. All the good lore. I tried reading the Silmarillion once. I got maybe halfway through, so maybe I'll try again someday. Who knows? Mm. Uh, this one is <clears throat> Religions of the World, a Latter-day Saint view. So the last religious class I took uh, from the Mormon church was this, was a Religions of the World class, and this was the textbook. Uh, and talked about, I mean, I remember it being relatively, like, fairly matter-of-fact, like, um, there's, uh, stuff in here about, like, these are all the religions of the world. They're not true, but these are them. Uh, and I hung on to this book because, I don't know why. I don't know if I'll keep hanging on to it. I don't know. <clears throat> oh, uh, art book by Boris Vallejo, Vallejo, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, uh, I have, okay, yes, there are a couple art books here that unfortunately I can't show on camera, uh, I mean, I guess I could, but they might violate YouTube terms of service. Um, yeah, oh, okay. <laughs> um, but if you're inter if you're into um, sexual art from the 1980s, Boras Vallejo is your guy. On a related note, this is a heavy metal magazine, although this is not from the 80s. This is, I believe, from very recent. Let's see, how recent? How do I find out? Oh. Well, this is imprecise, but it's got an advertisement for Terminator Genesis. I, 
I don't even know that one. Issue 275. Anyway, it's not like the heavy metal magazines of yore, but uh, a modern incarnation of it anyway. Um, comics in here. That, uh, I don't know much about the old heavy metal uh, magazine, except that it was... Um, somewhat influential on pop culture and the heavy metal movie definitely did something for um, persuading audiences that cartoons weren't just for kids. But this is a book of uh, comics from different artists. So a uh, curated collection of different concepts and ideas, sci-fi fantasy ideas. Another magazine, this one is High Fructose, uh, described as the new contemporary art magazine. And, ooh, pretty. It uh, features all sorts of um, modern contemporary artists and what they're working on, does interviews with them. They have a wonderful, wonderful Instagram feed. Uh, so if you're into art, I recommend following them on Instagram. I have more, many more issues of this. I don't know why there's only one in here. say too much about or anything. Okay, uh, this is a book called Only Revolutions by Mark Z. Danielewski, who is the author of House of Leaves, which is, of course, book of my soul or something um, and so because I loved House of Leaves I thought I would love Only Revolutions and I couldn't get very far it's it could be described as gimmicky um, you can read it let's see if I remember correctly uh, it's, first of all there's a lot going on here Definitely playing with the formatting and I remember having a difficult time even if you read it like trying to figure out what's going on uh, and I believe if I'm not mistaken you can also read it upside down yeah so like you can read it from either direction and it's supposed to Come turn into a cohesive story. But uh, I didn't, I didn't have the fortitude to do that. It's got two sets of page numbers, I like that. And obviously there's all sorts of other things here. There's like a, oh, it's like an almanac. Maybe. Uh, and just to give you a sample of the writing. Excepitating this rip wheeling me under gleeping swamp willows weeping Hurry, escape, 
but I'm too late, finding by such power irrefutable thrills. How creep will summon, how creep will wait, how creep will bind this world with fate. <laughs> I... It's so... Maybe it could be, should be thought of as a poem more than as a novel. I might want to give it another chance. Uh, I definitely struggled the last time I attempted, but um, I can give it another shot. This one is To Be or Not To Be, A Choosable Path Adventure by Ryan North, William Shakespeare, and you. Uh, if you're not familiar by Ryan North, he is a fairly prolific uh, comic book writer and uh, famously is the author behind Dinosaur Comics. I have been following him since a long, a long time. Uh, I was on the Truth and Beauty Bombs Forum back in the day. If any of you know what that is, say hello. Uh, and, and this book here is one of his experiments, kickstarted, kickstarted book uh, that is the story of, uh, what is it, Hamlet? And, um, but it's a choose-your-own-adventure story, and I'm afraid I didn't get very far reading this either. But I love Ryan North. Like, his work is wonderful. He's always delightful. Uh, and his writing is charming. Um, I think I just didn't, it just didn't grab me when I tried it, but... Um, it's delightful and has lovely art in it as well. Uh, he always gets great artists to collaborate with, and uh, he's just a wonderful, wholesome, extremely talented person. Oh. I'm pretty sure this one is from Randall Monroe. Showing a timeline of of or the evolutionary genesis of this book. Oh. <laughs> what a work of art! <laughs> uh, I I like it. Um, anyway, so this is one I can recommend. <clears throat> uh, so, okay, the complete C.S. Lewis, uh, and this is, most people know C.S. Lewis from Narnia, uh, he did the Chronicles of Narnia, but aside from that, he was a, uh, he wrote a lot about religion. Like, a lot. He was very religious, famously an atheist turned Christian, and, uh, and had a lot to say about faith. So this one uh, contains the books Mere Christianity, The Screwtape Letters, The Abolition of Man, The Great Divorce, The Problem of Pain, Miracles, and A Grief Observed. I think of these, I've only read the screw tape letters and maybe some of the great divorce. C.S. Lewis is an excellent writer. Uh, can't argue with that. I I don't know when I'll be reaching for this book anytime soon, but um, if 
you're looking for writing, uh, intelligent writing about religion, um, he's a good pick. Uh, Lord of the Rings. So I purchased this, I suppose, or it was given to me uh, when the movies came out. I think, yeah, I'd... I don't know exactly when that was, but uh, I got this version. I think I've read through this like copy of the book once. And it's good stuff. I mean, it's obviously, it's really long. This is the entire trilogy uh, in this one book. But it's, uh, it's excellent, of course. There's a reason it, it um, has been a element of culture for decades and decades and decades. Element, like a, like a fixture of, you know, single-handedly, you know, kicked off the fantasy genre. That can be difficult sometimes. I definitely run into problems with properties that they they were so influential in defining a genre that so much of media derived from them after the fact and uh, remixed ideas and extrapolated on concepts and there are some cultural um, I guess ideas or, or lores that have been so developed since then that going back to the original is kind of difficult. It, it, it can seem a little, I guess, mundane in comparison. I'm not saying Lord of the Rings is like that because I don't, I don't remember enough of what it's like to read it to say that, but I've definitely had that with some things. It wouldn't shock me if Lord of the Rings was that way, but it's also probably unique enough that it doesn't have that because no one can write like Tolkien. So I'm sure it's fine. Uh, I haven't watched the new series Rings of Power. I probably won't, but I've heard I've heard bad things about its production, but good things about the show. Oh. The Metaphysics of Star Trek. I picked this up. I think I picked this up before I was even a Star Trek fan. So I haven't read it. I am a Star Trek fan. Now, so I might want to take another look at it, although I suspect it's metaphysics about the original series, which I haven't seen very much of. Let's see, when did it come out? Nineteen ninety seven. So Next Generation had, had almost certainly come out already. I don't know if Deep Space Nine had. Uh, but just to give you some idea of what this book consists of, part one, uh, new life, new civilizations, in which we investigate the nature and proper treatment of life wherever it may be found. Uh, chapter one, in which we examine aliens. Uh, what does it mean to be human or to be a person? How do Starfleet personnel know new life when they need it? Are there cognitive and linguistic universals? Chapter two, in which we examine computers, androids, exocomps, nanites, and holograms, but especially Lieutenant Commander Data. Okay, so probably focused on next generation. Is artificial life possible? Artificial intelligence? Could there be artificial persons? Chapter 
Chapter 4 is examining the transporter, which is a classic philosophical argument in Star Trek. You know, if you transport somewhere, all your atoms get decomposed and then recomposed somewhere else. Are you still the same person? It's a, it's a classic question. Oh, but they do have Deep Space Nine in here, in which we examine the ex exotic. Is Jadzia Dax identical to Curzon Dax? What happened to Lieutenant William T. Riker when he split? What happened to Tuvok and Neelix when they fused? Oh, so Voyager too. Is it rational to transform yourself in the transporter or on the holodeck? So that one's about identity. Sounds good. Fun. I mean, Star Trek is obviously a rich vein of philosophical questions and quandaries. So a book like this seems like, of course, this exists. All right, moving on. Digital Genesis, the future of computing, robots, and AI. I definitely know why I bought this book. It looks like I didn't get very far in it, if this post-it note is my bookmark. And I don't remember very much of it. So I would probably have to start it again from the beginning. Written in 2017, so it's not terribly out of date. Hmm. Drivers of digital transformation include cloud computing, big data, blockchain, virtual reality, augmented reality, internet of things, artificial intelligence, autonomous vehicles, robots, dark factories, don't know what that is, 3D printing, synthetic biology. And then these ones grayed out, I think, because they haven't happened yet, are molecular self-assembly, quantum computing, well, that's happened, organic computing, that's also happened, cybernetic interfaces, that's also pretty much happened. So I don't know what, so I, I guess they have, I, I don't know what it's saying there. All right. <clears throat> Here's a reference book, a field guide to insects. Basically all the information you need to know about insects is going to be in this book. Peterson Field Guides is like a series of really reliable, useful information on uh, lots of different types of animals. Uh, in fact, I think, yeah, I have one here on mammals as well. Um, anyway, this can be handy if you want to if you're out in the field and you need to identify something, this will tell you all the different types of types of insects. Similarly with mammals, mammals of North America specifically. Oh, this one has photos. See, there's the cetaceans, some big cats. Deer, bats, oh. oh, little moles, oh, little mice, voles, oh. mouses, more mouses, squirrels. <clears throat> uh, Fault in Our Stars, John Green. Uh, you might know him from YouTube. Or you might know him from his books. This is a YA novel that kind of took off, got really popular, so I picked it up too. With some themes about Grief and pain and love. 
pretty solid. Coming of Age in the Milky Way by Timothy Ferris. I remember finding this book in a thrift store and being intrigued by the premise, uh, but I don't think I read through it. I think it's a history of Astronomy, maybe, or ah, this book purports to tell the story of how, through the workings of science, our species has arrived at its current estimation of the dimensions of cosmic space and time. Uh, it sounds great. I should read it. Whoever owned this last even annotated it. Which could be fun to uh, to read through. Ooh. The other types of neutrinos have since been found that account for the difference. Three exclamation points. <laughs> There's a little thing in the front that says, "When my ship comes in, I'll be at the airport." Charlie Brown. I was in Thailand. I don't know what that means. But it would be fun to read this. I should think about it. Alright, what else do we have here? We have... A comic. I almost certainly picked this up from a convention. Similarly here, this is in Japanese, so I would need some, well, I guess these days, I just need to have my phone with me pointed at the page to do my translating for me. Wow. Uh... 2600, the Hacker Quarterly? I guess this is a little zine about hacking. I don't know where I picked this up. Possibly DEF CON. Uh, topics include ghosting an operating system for privacy. Tracking Wi-Fi devices with Python and GPS. Bad ISP OPSEC. Anonymous temporary storage and retrieval. Thinking in AI. Fun with text-to-speech. Well, this sounds like fun. I don't think I ever read this either. Oh, there's a whole program in here. What, what is this? You'd have to write the whole thing. It's like the old days when they used to print programs in magazines. This is in the tracking Wi-Fi devices with Python and GPS chapter. I don't know what it's doing, but probably something cool. We've got editorials. Hmm. Fun. I wonder where I picked that up at. Um. Okay. Oh. Tamara Pierce! Oh, uh, Alana the First Adventure. So, the Wild Magic series is the one that I really um, uh, was attached to when I was a kid, but Tamara Pierce wrote 
a bunch of other stuff too. And Alan, the Alana series, I think, was the first series in that same universe. Uh, Song of the Lioness, I guess, is the name of the series. Um, about a young girl who disguises herself as a boy to join the army um, to fight in a fantasy world. Yeah, Tamara Pierce, one of my favorite authors as a kid. I'm, I'm fairly sure her work holds up, but I, I haven't read, uh, I haven't read it in a while. Good, good YA novel. Oh, and here we are again, Tamara Pierce. Uh, this one is the f fourth series in the Wild Magic. Okay, Wild Magic, I guess, is the first book in the series is called The Immor Immortals. Um, so this is the fourth book. Don't read this one first. You'll have spoilers. I don't know where the first three books are. But I have the fourth one here. Hmm. Okay, so this book is called Room to Dream. It's a um, biography, I guess, of David Lynch. Partially written by David Lynch. And I have this because I purchased it as a gift for someone, and when I gave it to them, they didn't want it. So they gave it back to me. Which, that never happened to me before at that point. Yeah, I, I guess if I get it, I, I don't really read biographies that often. David Lynch is obviously, like, his work is amazing, I don't know, uh, I'm sure it's an interesting story too, uh, I don't know if I'll ever read it though, because I didn't get it for me. Uh, this one is not a published book, this is a photo book that my mom gave to me and has a bunch of pictures of me as a kid and my family and oh, I was so cute. Uh, so dif different sort of book there. This last one here. The Greatest Science Stories Never Told, which, oh, the, I don't know if I've even opened this. The pages kind of cracked open. Uh, a pop science book. Don't know where it came from. Looks kind of fun. Short little two-page stories about inventions and stuff. but I don't know much about it. They're probably good stories. Oh, this one's about Google. Hmm. All right, two boxes of books. I think that's pretty good for now. Thank you very much for joining me. At some point, I've got, let's see, one, two, three, four, at least four, maybe five more boxes to go. Uh, so I hope you'll join me for that. Uh, in the meantime, Keep warm, stay safe, have a good night.